Hi everyone, my name is Katie LeBlanc and I'm a patient partner with the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board at Arthritis Research Canada and we're here today at the CRAs interviewing some of the research professionals who are here uh, talking about the research. So we're going to get started today. We have with us Dr. Karen Beatty, who's an associate professor in the Division of Rheumatology at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. And we also have Hannah with us as well, who is a master's student in medical science in McMaster University with a focus on rheumatoid arthritis. So thank you guys for being here today and for sharing your knowledge with our audience. Thank so, you for us. Yeah, so I'm going to start off by asking if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're involved in rheumatology and arthritis in general. Okay. You want to go first? All right, so I'll, I'll start. Um, so I'm a master's student, and I was really looking for a clinical opportunity to do research. And uh, Dr. Beatty and also Dr. Larche had a clinical project that they were looking for a master's student, so our trajectories kind of intersected there, um, and that's how I signed up. Um, I've actually been involved in rheumatology for quite a while. I uh, did my PhD in postdoctoral work at McMaster in rheumatology, uh, and um, my thesis work was in osteoarthritis, uh, specifically osteoarthritis in the knee, um, and I did a lot of imaging work with MRI and x-ray. Um, things have changed a little bit at McMaster in rheumatology, so my role is now directing the, the uh, research in the Division of Rheumatology. So we have a, a great group of, lar a large group of physicians that does research, and um, in um, diseases ranging from lupus to scleroderma to vasculitis, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and so I collaborate with the team of rheumatologists and all of our trainees um, in rheumatology. So that includes rheumatology fellows, internal medicine residents, medical students, um, graduate students, masters and PhD students, and also undergraduate students in the Bachelor uh, of, Health, of Health Sciences program and other undergraduate programs at McMaster. So it's a big team. Wow, yeah, that sounds really cool. It's great. <laughs> um, so we're also interested in why you're here at the CRAs, what you're presenting, maybe some new research that's out, and if you could tell us a little bit about that as well. Sure. Yeah. So the main focus of one of our posters this year um, is looking at different differences in disease activity between the hands and the feet in RA patients. Um, and what we're finding is that uh, a lot of clinicians may focus on the hands, but there are quite a lot of disease activity in the feet as well. So for any patients with RA, um, it's very important to tell your clinicians about your symptoms in the feet and maybe getting a clinical examination, maybe an imaging examination there. Um, and my role this year at the, um, at the CRA is really um, to work with our trainees uh, when they're doing presentations. Um, we have quite a few posters that are being presented in different areas of, of rheumatology um, and to work with them and um, in terms of their presentation skills uh, and also you know, to come to learn and to collaborate and meet new with researchers from all over the country and, and talk about projects that we can do. Um, and this year I actually got to be a poster uh, judge, so that means I get to go from poster to poster. <laughs> um, I'm assigned a, a number of posters that I have to go uh, see and if the presenting author is there, they talk to me about their poster and, their, and the research that they're doing um, so that's been that's been great Wow, you must see so much research when you're going through all these poster halls um, you guys don't have access to viewing those but there's tons of posters here um, every afternoon just rows and rows of posters and new research coming out which is really exciting it mm -hmm. is exciting for sure mm -hmm. um, so what do you think is the most important and exciting thing that has happened at the CRAs this year so far it's not over yet but as of right now what are your thoughts Oh. <laughs> um, what I'm finding is, and I haven't been to many of these, um, but I'm finding that this year there are a lot of different types of research going on that's being presented. So um, there's a lot of clinical work as would be expected, um, but there are also research from uh, physiotherapists, uh, from occupational therapists, um, research about a recreational therapy that I found really interesting, especially for kids. Um, and even a very basic clinical, or sorry, basic science research um, that could potentially become clinical research in later date. So I think that's a very good mix of everything at this conference. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, for me, um, there's so much that's been great. Uh, I think 
um, one of the things that's great is the is the um, the opportunity for people to present their poster and present their work. Sometimes it's not something that will necessarily get into the medical literature, um, but it's something that's still really important. And uh, um, as I was judging posters yesterday, the range of topics included things like how do we improve um, patient communication with their healthcare team? Um, what are things that we can do um, that will help patients um, really make the most of the appointments that they have with their um, with their healthcare providers? Uh, and so some of the strategies that they had come up with, and I asked lots of questions, and we came up with some new ideas. Um, so that we call that quality improvement work. Uh, so it's not necessarily a randomized trial with a medication, but how can we improve what we're currently doing? Um, and so uh, so those kinds of things, and seeing those posters and what's being do being done. Um, other posters um, talking about how we can reach communities that don't necessarily have a rheumatologist, but can we do telemedicine or other things like that that will be effective for patients? Um, and I think another highlight was just a talk that I, I heard um, from a dietitian that was talking mm -hmm. about um, nutrition and the role of nutrition in rheumatic diseases and um, are there diets that, that seem to improve symptoms or disease activity. Um, and so that was, that was really, that was great. And, uh, and from that talk, I, I would uh, maybe encourage um, our patients with rheumatic diseases to talk about um, about their diets um, or research it further for themselves or talk to people who know mm -hmm. um, so they can get more information and, and uh, education is power. Yeah, I would agree as well. I was at that talk yeah. too and I'm a nutritionist as well and I've used nutrition to manage my disease. It's a huge management tool that I use. So hearing that we're talking about it now at the CRAs and rheumatologists are starting to realize how much of a part nutrition can play in our management toolkit is really exciting and something uh, we can all start talking about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think also the important um, part about nutrition is that, um, you know, um, physicians get very little training in, mm -hmm. um, in nutrition. There's a lot to learn in medical school and in training and, and um, usually um, nutrition is not, um, doesn't play a major role in the education, um, but there are people who are very well educated and so to reach out to those people or mm -hmm. to ask your physician who to reach out to if they don't have those, um, those answers for you. Yeah, for sure. So do you think a, a big theme has been the patient voice and experience in I think that's care. Yeah, I think that's a, an, a theme that we're seeing ongoing across medicine. Um, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do some, some work in the neonatal intensive care unit at my hospital as a volunteer, and it's certainly something that we're seeing is patient-centered medicine. What's important to you, the patient? Um, because we can talk about blood levels and all kinds of stuff, but, you know, if that's not impacting your everyday life, what we really want to know, and one of the reasons we focus on the feet in mm -hmm. research is mm -hmm. that, you know, if your feet are um, are causing you pain, um, you know, it's it's really hard to enjoy, you know, a walk in the park or doing grocery shopping or going upstairs, up and downstairs or carrying mm -hmm. your children, um, mm -hmm. and so I think um, patients driving our research is something that's, that's um, um, becoming more and more prevalent. Yeah, I would agree, and definitely the research on the feet is really important. I know from my experience that was a huge factor um, when I was early diagnosed and I was having a lot of, of um, pain in my feet, not knowing how to go from there. So that's mm -hmm. awesome that you guys are, are, reaching, are researching that as well. Um, so we also wanted to know if you had maybe one or two tips for our audience to take away from the CRAs this year and what that would be. Well, I think we've kind of touched on some of yeah. them already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, one of the other, I think, really important things we're seeing right now is um, not only like patient-centered care, but looking at non-medication way of treating the disease and improving quality of life. And I think those are very important conversations to have with your physician. Um, maybe not even, uh, not specific to rheumatology, but for any diseases, um, is to tell, let your physician know what's really important in your life and how um, they can best help you get to where you want to be in terms of quality of life. Yeah, I think it's really important to um, to educate yourself um, in the right way, find the right resources. Um, and I think also, um, you know, quite often these um, diseases um, affect more than just the patient. They affect, you know, husbands and parents and um, and children um, and siblings. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's patient-centered medicine, but it's also family-centered medicine. And that was one of the things that the dietitian talked quite a bit about is, you know, um, when, you, when you feed yourself, you feed your family. And so, uh, so it's something that needs to be done um, with buy-in from everybody and involve everybody. Yeah, that's a good point. We often don't talk about the relationships that are affected when someone is diagnosed and living through this chronic disease. So, yeah, that's a really important point to bring up. Absolutely. 
So I wanted to thank Dr. Beattie and Hannah for being here with us today and for sharing all your knowledge. It's really important that we reach out to our patient community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. And we have some questions from the audience. Uh, do you have any tips for people who want to submit a scientific poster? So this is more of a question for Karen because mm -hmm. you've been judging them. Yeah, absolutely. So if this is um, if this is a patient, um, I would probably advocate that that um, that person connects with someone um, with their own rheumatologist or with a um, um, someone in an academic center. Um, and uh, if they have an idea for a research project, certainly you know tell your physician or or reach out to an academic. You know, send send an email to somebody um, and get involved in research. Um, that's something that I also probably wanted to say was that it's really, I mean, what we do depends on how much involvement and buy-in that we get from patients. And so, um, you know, when we recruit patients um, to participate in our studies, it's really, really important um, because we can only improve if we know what's important to you. Uh, and so, so patients being involved in research is, um, is great and it's almost an expectation now when we're applying for grants and for funding that we have voices from patients. And a question for both you and Hannah. What are some examples of non-medication therapies for arthritis? Oh wow, great question. And great question for non-physicians. I'm being sarcastic <laughs> because neither of us treat patients. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would advocate for is, um, is reaching out to your allied health. So occupational therapy, physiotherapy, um, people that are um, perhaps kinesiologists and trained in exercise. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we're also researching at McMaster is, um, is exercise for people with lupus and, uh, uh, and rheumatoid arthritis. And I think it's an under-researched under area. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think reaching out to those people for, um, for their uh, advice and guidance is um, probably the, the best thing I can, um, I can recommend. Yeah, and there are also a lot of research on um, new types of footwear or uh, different ways of still doing your job with arthritis. Um, and so this kind of stuff could be very useful for patients, but, and they are also non-medication. And I would also say that the Arthritis Society and other groups have um, excellent resources. Mm -hmm. So um, an Osteoporosis Society uh, of Canada um, that are always available to answer those kinds of questions. Okay, so I guess that's it for our questions from the audience. So I just want to thank you both again for being here, and we look forward to hearing about your research in the future. Great. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.